Hey, Mike Healy here. Listen, I want to thank you again for stopping by MikeHealyTraining.com and checking out these videos. Hopefully, they're get, you're getting a lot out of them. And today, I am absolutely going to blow your mind with what I'm about to show you because I'm going to show you some crazy before and after photos of who I was. And uh, the first photo I'm going to bring up, just so you see how rough around the edges I was, um, is actually me. I believe it was my 25th birthday. I went out. I drank all day. I was partying so hard. Uh, that at the end of the night, uh, I had tried to, I had attempted to stick my tongue in a ceiling fan and stop it, and it smashed my head and split me open. Okay, the good news is I'm going to show you the after photo, one of my favorite photos of me with my daughter when she was very young, um, as to the difference in, in what had happened, and I'm going to, I'm going to set you free in this video because this is, this is teaching that really changed my life, and it was what it was. It was the revelation of no condemnation that I couldn't, uh, I couldn't change myself, no matter what I thought or how I acted necessarily, but I had to let God change me on the inside before it manifested on the outside. So let me, and I want to, but you, you can't get changed if you feel like you're constantly in condemnation, like that religion, because Religion makes me sick, and here's here's why I'm making these videos. When I was in the gym this morning, I got this uh, this thought of it was obviously inspired uh, that there's a difference between relationship and religion. Okay, you can't dictate, mandate, or you know orchestrate relationship. Relationships come out of love. Okay, relationships come out of love. Religion comes out of duty, works condemnation burdens okay and that's why I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna really uh, you're gonna love this video okay so so here I was years ago uh, coming out of the bar industry alcoholic wild man you know I you're talking to you're looking at a guy who actually got kicked out of a Slayer concert <laughs> okay and because I was being too aggressive and rough in the pit you know the mosh pits I got kicked out of a Slayer concert. Okay, how do you do that one by any stretch of the imagination? Luckily, I got back. Not luckily, but I ended up getting back in because I because I bounced. I knew the guys that were running the security and they let me back in. Anyhow, so so let me let me let me go on what I'm going to talk to you about here is when I first uh, throughout my life, basically, I had I had thought or I had pictured uh, you know God is a hard taskmaster that I that I had done a lot of stuff wrong and there was no hope for me. How could this? Because that was what religion had been talking. You know, that was the voice of religion. And if you want to go way, way back in into the Bible, the very, very beginning of the Bible in the book of Genesis, where Adam and Eve sinned, or Adam sinned, basically started this whole earth curse system. Satan had tempted him by giving him knowledge of good and evil. Right? Well, guess what? That was that was a false. Uh, teaching that he was trying to manipulate them to get under that would say, well, you can't do this, you can't do this, because they were already, they had all rights and freedom based on relationship with Father God to begin with. So they didn't have to work or earn anything for it. But when that sin happened, it allowed, boom, now this that's where really religion began uh, as far as a condemnation thing. So let's let's get some stuff going here. And I'm telling you, if you if you watch this or you follow this or if you share this with somebody, it's going to change them if they're open-minded to, uh, to listen to this. Because a lot of people right now, you feel or you... You know that you've got some stuff going on in your life that should be cleaned up, okay? And you can't figure out how to do it. Well, guess what? There is good news. That's why I always do these videos is to encourage you. And you can't clean it up by yourself. I was, uh, I literally had been to the point in my life um, where I was, I was very violent. I've talked about this in some of the other videos. And I, I remember sitting in the parking lot of a church at about 2 o'clock in the morning yelling at God, drinking a six-pack of beer, uh, in that parking lot because I couldn't, I couldn't, I didn't, I didn't believe that God was going to help me. How could you love me because of what I had done in my past of all the sin and all the, uh, the violence and, and what I, you know, what spewed out of my mouth. I mean, I used to cuss like a vice cop and uh, not if, if you're a vice cop, that's uh, th okay. So don't take it the wrong way. But uh, you know what I'm saying? And, and really I, I had no revelation of love of God. And I taught this on the, in the one video I did on Luke, uh, Luke 15. But this is completely different because I want to take you to, uh, <clears throat> there's no condemnation. And, and, and it says in 
Romans 8, and that's not where I'm going, but there is ne therefore now no condemnation in Christ. So let me go to John 8. I want you to write that down if you grab a pen and paper or pause me real quick. John 8. And this was, uh, this was where I started to learn. See, when I first showed up at a church, my church that my pastor Gary Cassie uh, taught at or was teaching, I was pretty pretty concerned that they they were even going to let me in. I figured that they had a sign there with Mike Healy on it that had a, a you know a slash through you know those red red don't go tread here signs that I wouldn't be allowed in there. And I was welcomed at this church with open arms and love. And I told them that I was in the bar business and that they were like, oh come on in. And I'm like, really? I go wait a second. Did you know how what I did last night? And they're you know like oh come on in you know like this. And that got my, uh, got my attention because relationship and true love is acceptance for what, for regardless of what you've done. This is a big thing. There's, again, no condemnation in Christ Jesus. And this, what the story that really kind of uh, started to springboard this for me was Luke 8 is actually the talk, talking about Mary Magdalene. Now, you guys may or may not know about Mary Magdalene. The story of Mary Magdalene is basically... Uh, te uh, Jesus was out teaching. He was teaching about, you know, how the kingdom of God operated, basically how to get your needs met, healing, what, what the love of the Father really was all about. And all of a sudden, these Pharisees, the religious people, had dragged out Mary Magdalene. Basically, he, they dragged her into the street, and according to their law, the, the, you know, the religious law at the time, they were to, they were to stone her to death through uh, you know, because of this sin that they had caught her in. And they were really what they were trying to do. And they go to then, then they're surrounded in this lady. So understand, think about the shame this lady probably felt. That she was probably, probably didn't have any good future. And she was, this was the only way she could mentally think of that she could get her needs met. Basically, she had nothing there. She probably didn't have a family. And, and you know, and everybody's like, oh, that, you know, that lady's a prostitute. But guess, but, but what it is, as maybe that's the only thing that she knew at the time that that's that's what she could have you know that that's how she could get her needs met, and the religious people out there start pointing the finger at her and start saying this and that, and well then they want to catch they want to catch Jesus um, you know off of their side basically they want to condemn Jesus for what maybe he's going to say in this and says teacher okay so they approach him oh teacher uh, they said to Jesus this woman was caught in a very act of adultery the laws of Moses says stone her. Because they were trying to trap him, and they and here's what he said: uh, they kept them. They demanded an answer. You know, they basically wanted they wanted God to agree. They wanted Jesus to agree with them that their condemnation of this sin was going to say, you know, was make them feel better. Okay, but Jesus looks at. He goes, "All right, stone her." I bet they were like, "Oh yeah," you know. Now we get it. We get to condemn this person for what they've done. But this is what Jesus said. But. Let those who have never sinned throw the first stones. You have to understand, Jesus hung out with the sinners, the prostitutes, the tax collectors, and it really made the religious people mad because they couldn't understand the relationship, the love instead of the religious bondage and you know, what Jesus was trying to teach all these people. And understand, he wasn't mad at these people, but he was, because we don't war against flesh and blood, we go war against powers and principalities, religious strongholds and things that try to keep you from knowing the love of God. The whole purpose of, of dictated religion is to, to get you out of the understanding of grace and understanding the love of Jesus. Okay, so so he said, hey, you guys cast the first stone if you're, if you're free from sin. Completely understood, right? Then he stooped down again and wrote in the dust, okay? And I would love to know for sure what he exactly wrote in there. He probably put a smiley face down there so that Mary Magdalene, because Mary Magdalene ran and she was crying at Jesus' feet when this happened, okay? She knew she had probably listened from a distance of, of his teaching and understood, and then they ran out there. She went right to Jesus, okay? And now when the accusers heard this, they slipped away one by one, beginning with the oldest, until only Jesus was left in the middle of the crowd with the woman. And then Jesus stood up again, and you can picture the real Jesus, kind of <laughs> jokingly sitting up and smiling and going, hey, where's all your accusers, okay? Didn't even one of them condemn you? And, and you can see Mary Magdalene's probably this love, this... This she just got her life saved because she knew the law too, right? I'm sure. And, and no, Lord, she said. And Jesus said, "Neither do I. Neither do I. 
Go and sin no more. Go and sin no more, okay? Now, G, think about the power of the grace and the mercy because Jesus was, you know, basically an ordained minister at this time too who understood the law as good as anybody. He, used to pre he was preaching in the temple at 12 years old, okay? So he understood it. But he had come to teach grace, repentance, and freedom, not not religious condemnation. He called. He told that the he told the, uh, the 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 Pharisees and the Sadducees, the basically the religious people that were putting condemnation, that they were whitewashed tombs. Basically, they were they looked good on the outside, but inside they were tombs. They were dead inside. Okay. Now, the uh, the other one I want to talk to you about is in. Luke 7.36, so if you write that down, Luke 7.36, this, this is another one It says that Jesus was anointed by a sinful woman, okay? Uh, Jesus basically, in this, this story right here, Jesus had actually gotten an invitation from some religious people to come in and uh, have dinner with them. Basically, he went there, you know, and sat at the altar and everything, and this lady, this, and it said, a certain immoral woman... Uh, heard he was there and brought a beautiful jar filled with expensive perfume and she knelt behind him at his feet. She literally, she was still, uh, this lady that did this, and I think it was still Mary Magdalene at the same time, uh, probably in duty, not, not, I'm sorry, I apologize for that, not in duty, but in reverent, reverence, uh, in, in honor of what Jesus had saved her with, probably found that, found this. This is, this is remarkable because it says a certain immoral woman. And I, I would be, uh, I would really probably think that this was, this may have even been before, this was before uh, for, for John, right? It, 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 this happened, but this, this lady walks in, bows down behind him at the base of his feet, okay? And she puts this, uh, brought a beautiful jar filled with expensive perfume. And we're talking a lot of money that had been laid up in this, in this perfume. She knelt behind him at his feet weeping. Her tears fell on his feet. Her tears were crying to the point that they were falling on his feet. And she used her hair to wipe them off. Okay. And she kept kissing his feet because of the perfume on him. You have to understand this right here because I, I talked about it in John. But this is probably the same. This is Mary Magdalene probably at a repentance point of where she could say, what can I do to honor the man that saved my life? And she starts, uh, she starts putting this, and she was using her hair to wipe his feet. Think about how, how humble you have to be to dip down there. Because you got to remember, back then they didn't have Nike tennis shoes or anything like that, or boots. Um, they were, they, they walked around in sandals, and that was dusty and dirty. And they, the, you know, your feet were the dirtiest things out there. Uh, and she did that. She used her hair to do that. Okay. And when the Pharisee, let's get back to the goofball religious people who was the host, saw what was happening. He said to this woman, he, he said to himself, he didn't even say this out loud. Uh, this proves that Jesus is really not who he says he is. Um, you know, and God did not send him because if he would have known what kind of woman, what kind of woman is touching him, she's a sinner. I know entire uh, communities of people that will not be relatable to anybody out there that's in pain and hurting and so on because they're so bound up in religious condemnation that they can't get the love of Christ to set people free, which is the true mandate of what we're supposed to do as Christians is let's go out and replicate ourselves and teach the love of Christ, not the condemnation Christ on there. And one of my favorite uh, stories, this, this one I cried and cried and cried every time I saw it. I looked for it before I made the video, but I couldn't find it. It's a story of Zacchaeus in the Bible, and it's, the one of the, it's, a, it's a children's book that I'd had that I would read to my kids at night. And I mean, when I read this one, it just I cried like every time I read it. And it was Zacchaeus, a uh, story of Zacchaeus. And in, Zac in Luke 19, it's the Jesus and Zacchaeus. Jesus entered Jericho, and there was a man named Zacchaeus. He was one of the most influential so, uh, Jews in the Roman tax collecting business, and he had, he had become very rich. So this is a man who had a high place of honor as far as wealth, you know, stature. He was, you know, he was, he was influential in both the Jewish community and the Roman community, and he was, he was, he was rich. And he tried to get a look at Jesus, because he, but he was a short person, so I kind of understood the complex because I'm not very tall myself. And he tried to get to the, so he ran ahead. So basically Jesus is walking through this area, saw some crowds gathering around him. 
He ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree beside the road so he could watch from there. Think about the, the what this guy might have felt in the dark, in the in the still of the night when he's out there, um, thinking about what you know what his life had become. That he'd amassed wealth, but he probably and it goes on to talk about how he cheat you know kind of he, he was going to cheat cheat cheated people basically. Um, you know, the Romans, the Jews, everybody out there, and he amassed this wealth, but he probably felt a little condemnation, not because of the wealth. Understand, I've taught this before, not about the wealth, but just about the heart issue of what he was doing. And he probably heard because he knew who Jesus was. Understand, he had heard about Jesus, but he, and he probably had heard idly people talking about them, about him, and said, when Jesus came by, so there's a picture of Zacchaeus in a tree, when Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus, called him by name, said, Zacchaeus, come on down here, buddy, you know, for I must be a guest in your home today. I must be a guest in your home today. Could you imagine Zacchaeus feeling condemned, probably, getting up in a tree because he felt like he couldn't get through the crowds. You know, he didn't feel like he was, a, a, probably, he didn't have any uh, revelation that he was loved at all. And he had gotten up in this tree just so he could see and hear what this was because he was being drawn he was being drawn by love because Jesus was somebody that came to meet people's needs out of love and not condemnation. And he came, and Jesus says, come down from there. I must be a guest in your home. Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and took, his, took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy. Great excitement and joy. But the crowds were displeased because here's what they said. He said, he is gone to be the guest of another notorious sinner. <laughs> okay. They grumbled. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, I will give half my wealth to the poor. And if I have ever choked people in their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. Jesus responded, salvation has come to this home today for this man was shown himself to be a son of Abraham, basically part of the covenant now. Uh, and, I, and I, the son of man, have come to seek and save those like him who are lost. Understand, Jesus is not coming to, to try to go after the religious people because they think they got it all squared away. He's literally coming for those of us, those like me, uh, that were a mess, had no future, had no hope, uh, you know, basically dark, dark places, that we could receive the light in what was going on here. But I love that kid story every time I read it because it was like, uh, Zach, uh, Zacchaeus was way too small, and he says, why is everybody so tall? It was kind of a rhyme story. And he, you know, Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, come down from there and eat with me. And, G and Jesus got this big smile on him, and Zacchaeus. And I just cried every time I did that. And I, and I want to kind of uh, close this with this because I, hopefully this is in, in, instilling in you the, the, the love, okay, that you can understand that there's no condemnation. But here's what I want to kind of tell you about is uh, the la the, what set me free eventually was Mark, John. Uh, John 21, and because I had gotten to the point where I had finally given my life to the Lord, I had called upon the name of Jesus to be my Lord and Savior, and said, "Hey, I, my way's not working. You know, I, I've tried everything in my power, and it's just not working." Okay, and I, I got saved, and then there's obviously there's the lessons you got to learn, and you know, you got to walk this thing out, uh, you know, and learn what how the kingdom operates, as I'm trying to teach you here. And I still felt condemned in my heart, thinking, you know what, God, you, I don't know if you really understand what I've done. Understand that there's a difference between uh, conviction of what you may be doing because you're, you're sinning. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit convicting you to maybe not do something because it says the wages of sin are death. So he's not trying to do that. And condemnation is comes is basically from the devil basically condemnation is putting you the burden on you that you've done it wrong you've had you've done this you you know i mean i can go on and on about the sins that are out there right and i and i like i said in a couple videos i think i broke all 10 commandments you know readily um but here's one of my favorites is john 21 i kind of call it the restoration of peter and if you get this this is i i, I had finally come to the point in my life where i gave in my heart I had still, I, but I wasn't walking in the freedom of the release, of the love of Christ yet. And what I had done is I had, I had been praying about it and I'd be crying about it. you got to understand, I'd never even cried before for probably 15, 20 years, uh, even at the death of family members, because I had gotten such a hard heart. And G, Peter denied, we've all heard the story about Peter denying Jesus. Peter denied Jesus right before his crucifixion. Understand, Peter was one of the first disciples called. Jesus knew all this was going to happen. He even predicted, you know, Peter's denial at the Last Supper. 
But he didn't, but he, and never once did he condemn him. He still washed Peter's feet at the supper. He didn't smack him upside the head and going, dude, you know, I can't believe all the stuff I've done for you. And now look at the price you're, you know, look at how you repaid me or denied me. That's not what he did. What he did was he restored John. And I, and I, and when I, when, when I was sitting on, I was sitting on my couch, um, years ago. And I remember having this, this burden feeling of, of still the condemnation on me. And God had to restore that love into me. And I was praying and praying and praying. And God led me to this one in, in, 20, in verse 21. Peter had denied Jesus three times specifically. And that's when, and you and, and there's a very good uh, uh, adaptation. I don't know if the word I'll write here. Anyhow, of it in the, the movie, The Passion uh, of Jesus or can Peter help condemn people. So you got to remember this. Could you imagine if your best friend all of a sudden it basically denied you. You had been best friends with this person. And all of a sudden they wiped you out. They basically said, nope, this guy's a liar. This guy's a cheat. This guy's a steal. You know, I, because they didn't want to be associated with Jesus because Peter was probably afraid that he was going to get crucified as well, obviously. Okay. But here's what happened is when Peter, so Jesus is crucified, then raised back from the dead. And he then goes and sees the disciples again so they can start giving them the mandate officially of what they're going, the rest of their lives, what their calling is going to be. And he goes to Peter on the shore. And here's what it is. It says, Later Jesus appeared to them beside the Sea of Galilee. Simon, Simon Peter, he literally, Simon Peter had gone from being a fisherman, when Jesus called him, saw an amazing ministry go on, uh, go on of all these amazing, incredible things that Jesus has done. He had he helped heal people and so on. And now Jesus, because this happened, all these disciples were so depressed that they literally started going back to where they used to. They, they, had, they had gone back to where they felt comfortable. Peter himself went back. He said, I'm going fishing because he was a fisherman. And, and they said, hey, we'll come too, they all said. So they all went back in the boat, but they caught nothing all night. <laughs> and I mean, think about it. So they're, they're laying there. They're probably in the boat like this, just going, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? We had all these cool things. We saw demons cast out. We saw people racing the dead. You know, and now we're out. We can't catch fish. You know, I, and we were professional fishermen before we started. And what it was was they probably just had this. Nothing was working in their lives because they still felt this condemnation. A lot of them had denied him. They took off. They were hiding. And, you know, he called out to friends. Have you? And here's what's happening is Jesus was on the shore. They didn't even know who. They didn't had not seen him yet. Right? You know, they didn't know who he was. And he called out to them. He goes, hey, friends, have you guys caught any fish? And somebody called back, no. You know, then he said, he said, throw out your net on the right side of the boat and you'll get plenty of fish. Earlier on in, this, in the scripture, when Peter was called, he actually taught people. or he had That's how his whole ministry started. Peter's whole ministry started when he called, and it's in Luke 5. Uh, he had called out to... to uh, and I've really, and I'm going to do a whole teaching on Luke 5 because it will teach you how to, how to really uh, reap and, and get some business stuff going on here. But he had, he, in Luke 5, he actually said the first disciples, Jesus was preaching at the sea, the shore of Galilee, and Jesus asked the owner, uh, owner, owner to use the boat. And then he said, now go out where it's deep and I'll let down, let down your nets and you'll catch many fish. Peter, Simon said, we worked hard all last night, didn't catch a thing, but because you say so, we will. So go all the way through this whole section right here of the Bible, you know, of, of that John. You're here where Peter denied him condemnation. He goes back to the old way of living. Um, and he says, we, we fished all night, we didn't catch anything. And here's, here's Jesus, which they hadn't recognized yet. says, hey, throw out your boat on the other side, you'll catch plenty of fish. So they did. And they couldn't draw in the net because there were so many fish in it. And here's what had happened. It said, the, then the disciple whom Jesus loved, this is verse 7. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. Uh, when Simon Peter heard what it was, that it was the Lord, he put on his tunic for he'd stripped down, jumped into the water and swam to the shore. He was so fired up to realize that Jesus says, was back and, and that he didn't have continuity, and he knew it because of the story earlier, what had happened. Sometimes we can get off the track, and God will bring you back to where you had met him first. And, and here's the best part. Is he, as he's on there, they're making some food on the beach. And here, so picture all this. They, they come back in, and, and Peter just probably was weeping and crying. And I, I know it was, because when I got this revelation here, it changed me. After breakfast, Jesus said, said to Peter... 
He said, uh, Simon, Simon and John, you know, do you love me, Simon Peter? Simon Peter was the same, same guy, okay? He says, do you love me more than these? You know, basically anybody else here. And, and you can picture Peter probably kind of reflecting and, and tearfully saying, you, you know I love you, Lord. And, and, God, and Jesus says, well, feed my, feed my lambs, feed my people, basically teach them the word, right? And Jesus repeated another question. Simon, Simon son, of, son of John, Simon Peter, uh, you know, yes, Lord, Peter said, you know I love you, okay? Repeated the question. He repeated the same question, okay? So he basically said, do you love me? Yes. Then take care of my sheep. So he asked him twice. And then the third time, he says, One, once more he asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved that Jesus asked the, third, the question the third time. He said, Lord, you know everything and you know I love you. And when I, when I read the word, when, I, when the revelation of this story came to me, when it said Peter was grieved, it was a different, it was a different understanding of being grieved. It was, a, it, was, it, was a, uh, it was an, it was a release of the condemnation and the burden they, that he felt of, of denying him three times. And Jesus, without condemnation, instantly restored him and asked him three times basically do you love me do you love me you got to picture jesus on the shore arm around this this guy and they're about because he knows the future that he had for peter that he was going to do great and mighty works and throughout the whole rest of the old the new testament uh he just these amazing ministries happen as you know as the book of acts started and the holy spirit's revealed and basically what happened was he he was fully restored to his rightful place with Jesus and a lot of people are in that situation and that's where I was at is if you no matter what you've done in your life no matter how bad you think you've been or what kind of condemnation you've been into if you just repent to Jesus understand that he is he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins it says that those sins are Jesus himself took upon you, took upon the sin of the world, your sins and condemnation for you so that you didn't have to suffer the penalty of sin. And that's, this revelation set me free because again, you can't, because I teach a lot on business, but you can't truly receive from a loving father if you have condemnation thinking your dad's mad at you all the time because of, because of sins you've committed and sins you've done under, you know, you've, you've been under, and if you're still sinning, okay, just understand that you can't you can't change yourself. You could go to all the self help things you want, all of the you know you can read all the books you want. And I was doing that. I couldn't get myself set free because these were spiritual issues. These were heart issues because there is a devil, there is a god, there is real spiritual warfare going on out there. When I finally got the real revelation of understanding that that it wasn't in my head, it was in my heart. That's when my life changed. Okay, so if you just call upon the name of the Lord. Being saved is so simple. It's basically just saying, look to God, I can't do that. You know, I basically just got on my knees and I said, Lord, I repent. I heard about you, Jesus. I know, Jesus, that you, you know, I've heard that you've, you've you know, you, you've been, you, you were crucified, took upon your, my sin for you, and I'm willing to give away the penalty of sin, okay? If I don't have to go to hell because you're willing to take that, you took away from that, have at it, okay? Because that's the way I saw it. And from that point on, my life began to transform, and that's how I went from the crazy man to you know to kind of getting it together to to say the to say the least, uh, and 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 understand like I've said in these videos these are these are videos to encourage you not to always encourage you that the best is yet to come for you because if you just call upon the name of the Lord and all being saved is it says anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord calls upon Jesus will be saved. All you have to do is repent and say, listen, Father God, I just thank you. Jesus, that you sent God, you sent your son Jesus to die for my sins, that that you know that I, I I can't do it in my own strength, and I release that upon you, Lord, and I thank you, Jesus, that you forgive me. Amen. I mean, that's it. You 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 call that, you're not gonna feel probably typically lightning or thunderbolts. I didn't. But what had happened is, and I'll teach you about the power of the Holy Spirit here in a couple other videos, uh, that'll give you even more power to go above and beyond anything you could possibly think or imagine. But if you understand that there's no condemnation in Christ in those who belong in Christ Jesus, we read Romans 8 uh, there and it will set you free. And that you can't do this in your own strength, that you do have to have Jesus is a savior for good things to give you a good future and a good hope. Uh, Jeremiah 29 11, I, I, I know the plans I have for you to give you a good future and a good hope. 
So hopefully you got something out of this video again. My name is Mike Healy. I thank you for watching this. Hopefully you watch it to the end. Um, and hey, I can, I can go on and on. I'm going to make some more videos for you because I want to get this out there because it's changed my life. I know it's going to change yours. And I will see you at the top. Thanks.